so uh, uh, one way authentication two way authentication are the uh, uh, two types of authentication like based on the requirement okay if if you get a question like what are the factors of authentication it is what you know what you have what what you are okay so based on factors it can be multi factor or single factor okay and i wanted to uh, give you a note uh, regarding uh, two keywords which we will be uh, using throughout this course the first one is uh, climate c l a i m a n t you may note it down uh, the first one is climate c l a i m a n t so what is climate the entity whose identity needs to be proved is called a climate is that clear the entity whose identity needs to be proved is called climate say for example in a mail architecture i am the entity whose identity has to be proved to the mail server is that clear i am called as climate am i clear students i am climate in that case because i have to prove myself to the mail server that i am the right person is that clear the next keyword is verifier so just note down next keyword is verifier and the entity that tries to prove the identity of the climate is called verifier the entity that tries to prove the identity of the climate is called verifier is that clear in the same example the server will be the verifier so climate and verifier keep these two things in your mind which is quite important so with this uh, knowledge of climate uh, climate verifier uh, uh, different factors of authentication one way authentication two way authentication uh, these things you have to keep in mind uh, so yes so we have seen uh, you see the uh, slide students so yesterday we have discussed about the approaches of authentication and uh, in that i told you there are two uh, broad category like two different approaches uh, wide up approaches the first one is uh, password password based authentication so under password based we have two uh, types of passwords one is fixed password and other one is one time password uh, so fixed password is actually Uh, uh vulnerable to some kind of attacks like eavesdropping sniffing password guessing and unauthorized access to password files these are some of the attacks which may happen to fixed passwords so for that we cannot store the password as it is in the verifier site or while you are transmitting it so the passwords can be hashed we call it as fixed password hashing that means the verifier will store only the hashed value of that password the other one is uh, fixed password salting where any random value will be um, uh, concatenated with uh, the actual password and then the hash value of that is stored in the uh, verifier is that clear and that uh, random value is considered as a salt basically is that clear that is fixed password salting in that case generally uh, even if there is a unauthorized access to the server uh it is quite difficult for any uh, intruder to understand what the password is is that clear because it is hashed and uh, nobody can read it easily the other one is one time password so one time password is uh, uh, more strong and you cannot like uh, uh, the attacks what i told you which ha which may happen for fixed passwords cannot uh, will not happen to one time passwords okay so that's about uh, uh, the first approach that is password based authentication so the next approach is uh, cryptography based authentication okay second one is cryptography based authentication so in that uh, there are three types of cryptography based authentication that uh, we are going to discuss today uh, first one is authentication based on symmetry key without a trusted third party so there are many things we have to discuss here now authentication based on symmetry key i have to tell you what is symmetry key first then without a trusted third party i have to say tell you who is that trusted third party is that clear because the next one is authentication based on symmetry key with a trusted third party 
the two difference between uh, the, the that is the major difference between the first two uh, types of uh, cryptography based authentication okay so let us get into this so what is a symmetry key first thing symmetry key i think yesterday i told you uh, there are different types of keys uh, the, the two broad category is symmetric and asymmetric keys symmetric keys are those keys uh, basically uh, 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 what i can say for encryption and decryption same key is used exactly for both encryption and for decryption you are going to use the same key that type of a uh, uh, encryption is called as symmetric key encryption is that clear so what do you mean by symmetric key authentication here so let us see so here uh, let me uh, draw a diagram so that it is easy for you to understand okay so the diagram may not come out very well it is just for you to understand please bear with that students okay uh, let me call it as a and let me call this as b okay so there is no trusted third party here a wants to send some data to b and a is a client here and b is a verifier here okay a is client and b is verifier so now client a in the first step client a sends its id okay so let me mark the direction so a sends id of a okay id of a sorry yes id of a to verifier b in clear text what do you mean by clear text students it is not encrypted is that clear a sends its own id to b informing b that it has to send some data to b is that clear now b is a verifier a is a client so let me write it here a is c b is v which means it is a client and it's a verifier okay and in response to this b has to tell something b has to give something to a what b will give b will send a time stamp is that clear let me write it as time stamp of b okay b will share a time stamp of b and so this is comma student and nonce of b okay nonce means that is n o n c e nonce means a random number that's all it's just a random number which b generates and sends it to b and b will be expecting the same random number again from a just to verify it is exactly a who is communicating is that clear so a sends its own id to b and for that b sends time stamp of b and nonce of b to a in clear text is that clear if it is encrypted i will write it in a different way is that clear in clear text it is going to send it so for this upon receiving this what a will do a has to send something to b now to prove itself is that clear it is where a is a is a client which is proving its identity to b which is a verifier is that clear so a then sends to b which is again time stamp of b comma nonce of b time stamp of b nonce of b then again id of b okay so just uh, neglect this line id of b okay and information to b that means the data what i can say yeah let me write it as d okay let me write it as d so please keep this in mind students t is time stamp n is nonce d is data which it has to send or information okay so first a sends its id to b then b sends timestamp of b and nonce of nonce of b nonce is a random number 
then for that as a response a will send time stamp of b nonce of b id of b and information or data to b is that clear all are all these are encrypted using a shared key e a b using a shared key means it is a key which is symmetric that means this a will encrypt all these things using key a b and sends it to b is that clear b can only decrypt the message sent by a using this key is that clear because it is generated by a and a has used that key to encrypt it and that key also has been sent to b you can ask a question that how b got that key a only has to send the key to b is that clear so b can only decrypt the message sent by a then b figures out that this message from a is response to the secret challenge secret challenge is what b has sent a nonce to a right so that nonce has to be encrypted and that nonce and timestamp has to be encrypted with id of b and information to b so b has asked for a challenge to a and chal a has successfully uh, 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 achieved that challenge is that clear so b upon receiving it decrypts uh, using the same key key ab and finds all this and figures out that okay a is the right person to communicate and this is how a authenticates to b is that clear students am i audible is it clear to you sir uh, from where did uh, a get b id sir see when like... a, see a uh, a's id or b's id is kind of public public information okay so generally there will be certificates uh, which every device will have and those certificates are stored in directories is that clear digital directories we will come back we will we'll discuss there is uh, a separate topic to discuss about the directory services in that you will get to understand where exactly the id will be so basically ids are public and b can know a's id a can know b's id it's all public okay okay sir okay students so this is about uh, the uh, a uh, first type that is authentication based on symmetry key without a trusted third party okay so let me uh, clear this okay so next we are going to the other one that is authentication based on symmetry key with a trusted third party okay we had seen now without a trust party now we are going to see with a trusted third party so basically uh, this trusted third party will have the key trusted third party is going to generate this symmetry key and giving it to both a and b is that clear so in a, without a trusted third party what happens a creates a key and sends it to b there are a lot of problems with that when you send a key if the key itself is compromised i mean if somebody gets the key we don't know that can happen so some when somebody gets the key obviously that person can easily decrypt whatever a has sent is that clear so the identity can be malfunctioned so in that case if you have a trusted third party again keep that in mind it is not just the third party it is trusted third party okay when you have a trusted third party means who is going to like how do you know if he is a trusted third party again with the directory services with the certificates what this the trusted third party have is that clear so who gives this uh, certificates what is directory services who is assigning authority we are going to see all those things is that clear so basically this is also called as needham scruder symmetry key authentication protocol you can note down it is needham scruder n e e d h a m n e e d h a m s c h r o e d e r i don't know exactly how to pronounce it needham scroder s c h r o e d e r n e e d h a m hyphen s c h r o e d e r needham scroder symmetric key authentication protocol is that clear 
the second approach that is authentication based on symmetry key with a trusted party trusted third party is called as is also termed as needham scruder uh, symmetry key uh, uh, authentication protocol so basically the goal here is uh, there is be a mutual authentication between two parties a and b in the presence of an advisory is that clear an advisory who has the knowledge of shared secret keys of the principals is that clear students so the, the goal here is mutual authentication between two parties a and b in the presence of an advisory who know the knowledge of shared secret keys is that clear so what happens let us see again uh, uh, step wise okay uh, before i start uh, just uh, uh, know this point so uh, here principal a which wishes to communicate with b should first contact the trusted third party to obtain a shared key is that clear a should contact the trusted third party to get the shared key is that clear key ab and a certificate also is that clear and a certificate also which contains id of a and key ab is that clear students so in the previous approach the certificate is already collected from some trusted third party and key is generated only by the sender that is a here the a has to approach a trusted third party to obtain the certificate which contains its id and also key is that clear the, then the same certificate the certificate will be sent to b is that clear the certificate is sent to b let us see how uh, how it works okay okay so the first step principal a to obtain shared key key ab is that clear so what is the first step a contacts the trusted third party so basically i have to write uh, uh, let me say uh, yeah i will write uh, sir we cannot see your pointer i am not yet writing can you just see two lines here yes sir yeah i have not yet started writing okay sir okay so i am just figuring out where can i add the uh, trusted third party so this is a okay now you can see right i have written a and b yes sir yes sir you can see yeah so these are a and b so let me write a trusted third party somewhere here okay so let me call it as t because it is trusted third party a will contact the trusted third party is that clear a will contact the trusted third party in the first step is that clear so a sends what will a send a will send id of a it just sends id of a to the trusted third party and id of b also because it tells trusted third party that it has to contact id it contact it should contact b okay id of b id of a and id of b students i don't have a stylus i am writing this with the help of a mouse okay so it may not look very good and clear please bear with that so it sends uh, a a uh, a contacts a trusted third party s and it sends id of a id of b and nonce nonce of a was that clear what is nonce i already told you nonce is just a random number is that clear because when a tries to communicate with a trusted third party a has to check whether the trusted third party is the right person or not okay, that's why it is giving a challenge it is giving a nonce to trusted third party so for this request trusted third party has to give a response right trusted third party will give a response to a what is that response trusted third party will give a response with key 
it will give a key it generates a key with a b is that clear it generates a key key k a b and a token of principal b along with the nonce is that clear the trusted third party responds with key a b that is k a b and a token of principal uh, and a token for principal b we don't know that it, it it has already given a token to principal b along with nonce and id received is that clear along with nonce and id received so let us write it in this way uh, i will erase it uh, okay so let me take the pointer again so here this i will write it here student it will it will be little long so what i will do this trusted third party will send some data to a and what will be that data the data will be nonce of a because it is a challenge it has to send nonce of a again then id of b then key okay key ab comma then key okay uh, what i will and i will explain it after writing encrypted data using e bt e A B comma. I want you to write all these students in your notebook. A D of A. So this whole thing will be encrypted using T. AT. See, I'll explain you, students. When A tries to communicate with this tree T, that is trusted third party, what happens? A will generate a key. Is that clear? That key is for communication between A and T. It's a symmetry key. That is key AT. Is that clear? And when A sends a nonce of A, ID of A, and ID of B. This trusted third party will understand that A wants to communicate with B, and hence A is asking for a key to communicate with B. Is that clear? So for that response, what T will send? T will send nonce of A, which it has already received, ID of B. Then a generated key K A B. Is that clear? That 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 is the symmetry key between A and B for communication between A and B. Is that clear? And There is a token also. What is the token contain? It's key A B. That means a key A B. The same thing and I D of A, which will be encrypted using a session key called key B T. Is that clear? That's the actually a session key for communication between B and T. Is that clear, students? That's the session key for communication between B and T, which B which B will have, which A doesn't have. Is that clear? Because A have a key that is key A T. b have a key that is key bt and a is receiving a new key called key ab also that is for communication between key that is for communication between two parties a and b is that clear so this is sent to a is it clear students so upon receiving this what will a do a sends the received token to principal b is that clear 
So A upon receiving this will send the received token. What is the received token? This is the received token. E B T E A B I D of A. Is that clear? So let me write it. Encrypted using E B T. What is there inside it? There is a key for communication between A and B, and ID of sorry that line please neglect it. ID of A it sends it okay, and for that B will give a response to A. Is that clear? B upon receiving that we have the key that is KBT we already have because that is a key generated for communication between B and T. It has it and it decrypts it. When it decrypts, what it will see? It will key a new key called KAB and ID of A. We will understand that okay. When when uh, the trusted third party has encrypted this information, obviously it should be a right information, a genuine information which is coming from A. So what B will send, but still it has to uh, ask A for any uh, proof or any challenge. Okay. So what it will do? We will send to A with a nonce, nonce of B. Is that clear? We will send to A a nonce of B, which will be encrypted using encrypted using what key? Can anyone guess? Can anyone guess with what key B sends uh, uh, a data that is encrypted? A B sir, K A B. Yes, it should be E A B. Is that clear? So B sends a data that is announced to A, which is encrypted using key A B. So B is expecting something from A for a proof. Now that's all. Is that clear? So upon receiving this, what will A do? A will again send a message to A. Sorry, B. Which is the same nonce, but minus one. Is that clear? I said you nonce is just a number, a random number. Minus one will be sent, and that that is also encrypted using key A B. Is that clear, students? That is also encrypted using key A B. In this case, the B understands that. Yes, it is the right person for communication, and then the communication continues. Basically, you are proving authentication here. Let me tell it again. Please listen. There are two parties, A and B, who wants to have mutual authentication. So, with the presence of a trusted third party, what A will do? A will ask trusted third party to generate a key for its communication with B. For that, A has to inform. Trusted third party to whom it is communicating, so it will send its own ID and with whom it has to communicate. That is ID of B and a challenge, nonce A. Is that clear? For that, T will respond. What will T respond? We have written it here. T will respond. It's the nonce A which it has received. ID of B, then a generated new key that is E A B and a token. What is the token? The same key and ID of A encrypted using the Session key between B and T is that clear? That is K B T. This whole thing will be encrypted using a session key key A T because A has generated a session key to communicate with trusted third party and that is key A T. This whole thing will be encrypted using key A T. Is that clear? That will be sent from trusted third party to A. So A will be uh, sending the received token to B. That is what. A key with ID of A that is encrypted using the session key between B and trusted third party. That is key B T. Is that clear? And for that, B will send a nonce encrypted using the new key. That is key A B to A. And for that, as a challenge response, A will send nonce of B minus one encrypted using the key key A B. And this completes the authentication process between A and B. Is it clear, students? Do you have any doubts with this? Any question regarding this? 
Sir, uh, is talent, the meaning of challenge is it basically sends and nonce. That's it. Yes, yes. It's basically testing. If I okay. tell you something, uh, are you, are, uh, will you be able to tell the same thing to me again? If you have listened it properly, if you are the only one who has listened it, then you will you can tell it. That's what the challenge is. That's all. A simple words. Okay. Sir. Am I clear, students? Okay. So I'm removing this uh, diagram. So I hope you have written it because if you write it, it will be very easy for you to understand. Is that clear students? So I will erase it now. Okay, so the next one, the last one. Uh, in cryptography based authentication is authentication based on public keys. Is that clear? So this is a new thing. We have already seen symmetry key, but there is something called as asymmetric keys also. What are asymmetric keys? For encrypting and decrypting, you are going to use two different keys. Is that clear? How will it happen? Say for example, two parties A and B. A also have a key pair that is public key and private key. B also have a key pair that is public key and private key. B's public key will be known to everyone. It is easy for if you, even if you don't know, it is easy for you to get it from a trusted third party. Okay. Whereas B's private key is only known to B. Nobody can know the private key of B. Similarly, with case A also. Is that clear? A's public key can be known by anyone, but private key of A is only private to A. Nobody can know it. The private key of A is known only to A. Is that clear? That's the idea here. Now, this is also called as Needham Scruder public key authentication protocol. The pre one, previous one is Needham Scruder symmetric key authentication protocol. Here it is Needham Scruder public key authentication protocol. Is that clear, students? Here also it is in the presence of a trusted third party. So let me draw it. Uh, I will try to finish it quickly because you have already uh, seen two examples and it is very easy now for you to understand. Okay. So you have a trusted third party. Uh, let me call it as T as it is. And this is A. A wants to send some data to B using the public key that is asymmetric keys. Okay. Principal A to obtain the public key that is a public key of principal B. Suppose imagine A doesn't have the public key of B from the so it has to get the public key of B from the trusted third party. So what A will send the same thing as we had seen previously. That is id of a and id of b b is going to inform trusted third party that i am trying to communicate with b is that clear it is not going to send any nonce here is that clear students because what it is receiving is just and it is not encrypting also. It is just a public key. Is that clear? So what A will send for that? Sorry, what trusted third party will send for that? It sends key UB. So this is public key of B. Is that clear? It is sending the public key of B because A doesn't know public key of B initially. So it sends public key of B and ID of is that clear encrypted this is encrypted using this whole thing is encrypted using public key of a it is represented as k u a is that clear public key of a k u b means public key of b is that clear students so a sends id of a id of b to trusted third party trusted third party will respond the public key of b and id of b encrypted using the public key of a why it is encrypted using the public key of a because trusted third party doesn't know private key of a 
and when it encrypts using the public key of a the key pair that is only private key uh, uh, key of a has to be used to decrypt it when when something is encrypted using the public key of a public uh, private key of b cannot be used to decrypt it or public key of b cannot be used to decrypt it only the private key of a only has to be used to decrypt it it is the key pair that's what we call it as key pair is that clear who is that having pair a alone having that pair a only can decrypt it okay upon receiving this what a will do a will send something to b what it is it sends nonce of a then id of a encrypted using what students can anyone tell encrypted using what yes public key of uh, b yes it has to be encrypted using the public key of b because if a encrypts it using public key of a then b cannot decrypt it b doesn't have a private key of a when it encrypts using the public key of b b can decrypt it because it has its own private key so for that b will send a response to a okay sorry b will communicate there is a small change here okay b has to obtain the public key of a b also imagine b also doesn't have the public key of a okay from trusted third party again so what b will do let me write here b is going to communicate to trusted third party so it will add id of b its own id then it is requesting for id of a i mean public key of a so id of a also has to be sent the same thing which a did is that clear it sends for that this trusted third party will give a response same thing like this is that clear that is a u a that is public key of a then id of a which is encrypted using what this encrypted using what key students public key of b is that clear here it used public key of a here it will be public key of b is that clear now upon receiving it b will send a something what it is b will send nonce of b because it is mutual authentication it sends nonce of b nonce of a as it is which it has received already then that thing is encrypted using public key of a because it only a can decrypt it is that clear and now for that a also has to give a response a final one okay so let me write it here hope it is visible to you a will respond b with nonce of b which it has received using the public key encrypted using the public key a u d am i clear students so let me tell you again this is public key encryption that means private and public key are uh, involved in this which are asymmetric keys a doesn't have the public key of b it contacts the trusted third party and receives the public key of b and it sends a nonce and its own id use encrypted using the public key of b b doesn't have the public key of a so it also contacts the trusted third party and receives the public key of a and then when b receives the public key of a it sends the nonce of a which it has received and its own nonce to a with a with encryption by public key of a 
then upon receiving that a sends nonce of b back to b using uh, by encrypting uh, with the public key of b so both the parties have proved its identity is it clear students am i clear to you please respond have any questions yes sir no students at least respond yes sir okay sir we can encrypt with anyone's public key but only uh, the private key holder of can decrypt that am i yes. right sir yes you are right it's yes. just like every one of us have a key pair public and private if i want to send someone something i will encrypt it using the private key of me so that the other person can decrypt using public key of mine okay is the same way the other way is also the same it's just that public key is known to everyone private key is known to only me is that clear so we will stop here for the day we'll continue in the next class